First, we put on this lidocaine cream and it has to set for 45 minutes so that it doesn't hurt as bad whenever we put the needles in. And we wrap it in saran wrap and let it wait, like I said, for 45 minutes while we set the machine and everything up. This is the cartridge that we use for the machine and you have to pull off all the tabs and make sure all the all of the connections are tight. So you just double check on them and make sure before you put it in the machine. And when you put it in, there's three air sensors that you have to make sure that you get put into place. Close the door. And you spike the saline. Okay. Once you get it spiked, then you hook up this. It's called the access pressure pod. And you press the button and you have to wait 18 minutes where it runs through and cycles through the machine before we start. Okay, and now we're just going to draw up um, the heparin that we use to put in to help so that he doesn't clot while he's on the machine. And we're just going to draw it up. It's all the bubbles in it. Okay. And we'll put it over here. And you probably can't see it in. Then we use saline to flush the flush the lines whenever we stick him. And we have to draw it out of this bag. And we recap all the needles, even though you're not supposed to. Okay, so we've got those ready. And the bags of dialysate is the big bags that we have laying here, up here. This one lays on the heater. And these are orange, and when it gets warm to the right temperature, these turn green. And this is continually, when I get it all hooked up, it'll continually be going in to this bag so that it's warming all the time before it goes into him. He gets pretty cold while he's on it, too, so. Okay, then to get all these hooked together, you put this on each one of them. And then you always have an extra one because it doesn't hook, a different thing hooks to this one. So you have to bleed it off and tie it. Tie it up like this and then whenever I spike it then you bleed it off. Then you take the spike. Whoops. Into this one. Then all of these bags are, they're not leaking now, so you have to break all of this on each one of them. Open them up. Okay, this is the connector piece that we hook to this bag and how we will hook the dialysate up to the machine. So you clamp it, break it, and then whenever we get ready to do the machine, this piece will hook up and that's how the dialysate will actually get 
through the lines. The next step we do is called snap and tap and you have to do it to get all of the air out of the lines. So you go down each line and you do the red and then the cartridge and then the blue and you go all the way down to get all the air out and you tap this little guy here to get the air out of it. Then you come over to the cartridge here, the filter, and you have to hit it and get all the air out of it. And you go through and do the, all the lines in the cartridge twice to make sure you've got all the air out. Then once you've done all the snap and tap, you press stop. And then you have to drain. This is the, this is the saline line here. And you drain it and clamp. And then you unhook these two. So this is the saline line, what I'm clamping together here. And you leave those clamps closed. The only reason you would open them is if you needed to do a manual rinse back or if you were going to, um, if we needed to actually add fluid to him if he was dehydrated or under his dry weight or if he starts cramping during the treatment, you can open these up and give him some saline. Then you hook the green line to the connector here. So like I said earlier, so this is how the dialysate gets in the lines. So you hook this up and you open those clamps. Then the yellow line is always your waistline. So you take it, I don't like my lines to be messed up, and you hook to the waistline here that's in the machine, and we have a line that goes, you open them up, we have a line that goes over here behind and goes down to the basement to a drain, so the waste that we actually take off of him, which is what is your urine, like his, the machine does for him, and that goes down through the, through the drain in the basement. And we can set the machine now too. We've got figured how much. You always add 0.3 because that's how much he gets in the rinse back. So we'll set the machine here. This is the volume screen and a rate screen. And you set it to what you want it, want it to be. Before we, before we start the dialysis, he has to do a sitting blood pressure and a standing blood pressure, his temperature, and his weight. And then we record everything on here. We have to put the sitting, standing, everything, his post weight. How you know how much fluid you're actually going to take off is we have a dry weight, which is 80.5 kilograms. And so he weighs himself. We write down what it is, subtract the dry weight, and then that's how much fluid we set the machine to take off. And we write that all down right here. And then this just tells our, um, our cartridge numbers and everything so we know what's being used and ask questions like are you short of breath, swelling, have you been to the ER and we put what what solution that we're using and that we're actually using the bags today and that his fistula that you can hear, hear and feel the thrill in the brewery so 146 over 93 92 now he's checking his temperature <laughs> I think the main reason that we do his temperature before is if he's getting any kind of infection in his arm, it's pretty important, and so we monitor. 98.6. Plus, if there's any complications during afterwards, you know, the temperature can be one of the things that changes right away. So, and now he'll do his weight. Next, I'm going to do my standing blood pressure. Now he's going to do his weight. Like I said, his dry weight is 80.5, but if we, um, if he's been doing a lot or we do it a different time of day, sometimes the weight's a little bit different, so we adjust the saran wrap. And we'll have some cleaning stuff here that you'll clean his arm off. And then you use alcohol. Clean it. Then we're actually, we use the buttonhole technique where you use the same two holes every time. So then you have to take tweezers and pick off the scabs before you actually put the needles in. Then we're going to get ready to stick. We have two needles. The red one will actually be the one that's pulling the blood out, and that's the bottom one. The top one is putting the blood back into him. Can you hold it? 
bit. Then this is when we use the saline to flush and make sure that we've got good, good return if the needles need readjusted or anything. So you always pull first so that you're not shooting it in if it's not in the right area. And it pulls good. You always advance it all the way in so that it doesn't bleed around it. And I always put these little gauze pieces underneath it just to prop it up a little bit so that it's not on the wall of the vein in there. Tape it once. Make sure you've got good here. Same thing with the saline flush and then we'll actually put the um, heparin in this one as well. You can feel when you're pulling back and pushing it in if you have any resistance if it's up against the wall. Same thing with the hip when you pull back a little bit first. tape them down better after you make sure that they're in the right place. Give you a little horseshoe. And then one over the top. Once you tape them down, I always double check that I'm still in the right place so that the needles got moved too much. Okay, then you hook, then we'll hook these lines up to the lines on the machine, red to red. And Blue to blue. And you always put a syringe on here so that it's not just open to the air. You don't want to touch anything. Make sure your caps are tight. And tape this part to his hand so that it's not pulling. It's kind of a long piece of tape for that. And we'll do the blue one. And you always want to make sure you've got your clamps done or you will shoot blood everywhere. And tape it up. Then just so the lines aren't hanging, make pulling on it tape them up to the table and then you double check your machine and everything and your white clamps are always closed you make sure that got your arm moved. You open up all of these reds and blues are open make sure your yellows are opened and your greens are open and if if anything is messed up you'll get an alarm on the machine during the treatment well actually as soon as you start and so now that we've double checked everything and we're ready to go, we the machine and everything is set, we hit the green button here to go, and as it starts, he always does his blood pressure at the very beginning, and we, re we record that, and then I watch the numbers for the pressures on the machine, and I have a little thing here that tells me it can't be over what numbers if the pressures are too high, 
and then I record all of the numbers, record his blood pressure, and every 30 minutes the machine kicks down and does a double check of everything, does all the sensors, and we do blood pressure and write all the numbers at that same time. So then once we start, we always start at 200 milliliters per minute. And then after so long, you can just slowly keep going up because we go up to 500 milliliters per minute. And then you keep an eye on your um, filter here. This is where the dialysate and the blood are actually going in opposite directions. And that's where it's doing the filtering. And you have to watch for air in here. If there's air, you put a needle on, um, a syringe on, and you pull the air out and then flush with saline again and you, so that it doesn't clot. If this starts clotting, then you've got problems and you'll get a bunch of alarms on the machine. His fistula is what we use here in his arm. He had a catheter in his chest beforehand and they get, want to take those out as soon as possible because of the high risk for infection. So he has his fistula and the reason that you keep watch your pressures and keep checking it is because if he infiltrates, his arm will just start, all the blood will be pumping in there and we run at 500 milliliters per minute. So that just starts pumping into that space his arm gets huge and it turns into a really bad bruise. We've actually done this and you have to ice and heat off and on for like 24 hours and it, it's just a pain and it hurts him. So, so now he has his fistula and we stick both of those. And the, another thing, and a good thing about the fistula is that you can run at a higher speed than the catheter in the chest. You can't run as high so it takes longer whenever you're using the catheter. Okay, at the end of treatment, we will unhook the red one, the arterial line, put on the syringe with saline, you rehook the arterial line back up to the saline bag, open it all up, and you do what we call the rinse back. So it's taking all the blood that's in the lines and in the machine and putting it back into his body so he doesn't lose that, lose that amount. And so whenever that finishes, then we hook the blue line back up and we'll flush his lines and tear the machine down. We're going to go ahead and flush the arterial line with saline so that blood goes back into his body. And then you don't have to flush the, the other one because the saline that's rinsing back now actually puts it all back in. And remove the tape. And the rinse back is done. So we'll undo blue. And you hook back up here and then the machine will be ready to tore down, tear down. And now we'll remove the tape from the top one first. And when we pull the needles out, he will hold pressure on them for five minutes with the gauze. And then at the end of five minutes, we check to can hold that up. At the end of five minutes, we check to make sure that the bleeding has stopped. His usually doesn't last longer than five minutes, so. Then we just pull it out, and once you get it out, you put pressure on it. And do the next one. He doesn't usually bleed too bad. We've only had a couple episodes where he's took longer to clot. And we pull this one. And we have a sharps container for all of our needles. And then on the machine, now that it's done, it, it tells you everything that you've done. So it'll tell us took two hours and ten minutes, how much dialysate it used, and then um, how much fluid you took off, and how many, how many times the blood was circulated. And then you'll um, turn the machine off, tear all this down, and it goes in the trash. It, and we end up having a lot of trash afterwards. So, To tear the machine down, you just turn it off, and you undo, basically undo everything that you put together at the beginning. 
waistline. Goes back up to the bag. Unhook. Sometimes they're hard to do. And you just open it. The cartridge and everything comes out. You use a different one every time. So this is trash. We put the needles in the sharps container and we just use disinfectant wipes and clean everything off. This all goes in the trash as well. At the end of the treatment, we have to check his blood pressure again, his temperature, and he does a post weight. And we'll record all that on the sheets. And that basically wraps up our home dialysis treatment. Right here beside the machine is where we keep all of our supplies for the treatment and you've got all your needles and anything that, that we would need during the treatment right here. This is the dining room where we keep all of the supplies. It takes all of these boxes and this is our backup supplies here for um, the treatments and we have our needles and we have a centrifuge here that we use when we do labs. We have to spin them before we send them off. <laughs>